Hello everyone, JP from Anitha here. First of all, Happy New Year everybody. Hopefully 2018 will be even better than 2017. And second of all, we are continuing our video series in which we're talking about the things of our expertise and the things that matter not only to us, but also to our community. And the MTH community has spoken. They are interested in hearing more about this topic and there is no surprise since it is a very hot debate in a blockchains community. Some of you may already guessed it. Yes, we're going to talk today about the fight between the proof of work and the proof of stake. So this, uh, I'm not going to state my opinion. I'm just going to talk about uh, what is what that is and the introduction to both the proof of work and the proof of stake. So let's start off with the good old proof of work and what that is. And if we want to talk about the proof of work, we have to talk about mining. Mining is a process of validating a transaction or a block in a network by process of complex algorithms to prove and validate the correctness of the transaction and thereby add a new block to the chain. You probably have heard about this term mining and miners more in Bitcoin and Ethereum than in uh, altcoins uh, since like Monetha they do sometimes um, ICOs but what does it take to be a miner and to do mining? I think it's really important to talk. So to be a miner, you need to have a high power process based computers continuously running these complex mining algorithms. So when a transaction happens in a coins network, let's say uh, Ethereum for easier understanding and because we are based on the Ethereum network, the more the computing power and more computers the miner has, the bigger chance he may get to validate the transaction faster than the other miners in the network and hence may earn Ethereum as a reward. So what is proof of work since they do work hand in hand? Proof of work is a protocol that one of the main goals is minimizing the chance of cyber attacks such as DDoS, uh, which has the purpose of exhausting the resources of a computer system by sending, sending multiple fake requests in a centralized way. Mining essentially serves two purposes. First is to verify the legitimacy of a transaction or avoiding the so-called double spending problem. And the second is to create new digital currencies or I would say um, digi units of a digital currency as Ether or um, BDC. And by doing these tasks, miners are being rewarded for completing them. So when you want to send a transaction, um, I assume that most of you already did one or a few times, this is what happens behind the scenes. Transactions are being bundled together into what we call a block. And nowadays, miners pool their energy in order to verify a block since there are so many. Miners verify that transactions within each block are legitimate. And to do so, miners must solve a mathematical puzzle known as proof of work problem. A reward is given to a miner who solves the problem and then verified transactions are stored in public blockchain. I know that it might sound a little bit complex to understand at first, but I do have a very good example, which wasn't created by me. Uh, I think I read it in Blog Geeks, don't take it for granted, but I think it perfectly illustrates the situation in very simple words. Assume that you're in the math exam alongside with other classmates in the classroom. Student who can not only come up with the correct answer, but also can come up with the complete proof of how he came up to that answer, the thought process behind it, and does it first, gets a reward. So as we know, a student needs brain power in order to go through a math exam, and that consu consumes a lot of energy from his body. Now, bear with me, mapping it to an analog in a real world, we would have math exam referring to a transaction. 
that classroom with other minors <laughs> would be the world. Student would be a computer that runs these complex algorithms. Brain power would be the computing power. And then the energy spent by the student would be uh, a lot of electric power, which is needed for computers. And then finally, the A plus that you got for your math exam would be your coin. So hopefully this explanation helps. And I do want to uh, bring an analog to the proof of stake, as we already talked about proof of work. Proof of stake would be you getting that A plus grade, but bribing your teacher, or I should say maybe lending your money to your teacher. I know it might sound complex, but bear with me. So what is then proof of stake, the rival of proof of work? Proof of stake is an alternate way of verifying and validating the transaction or a block doing the same thing, but in a very different approach. Proof of stake algorithm will pick the validator, which is equivalent to a minor in proof of work, it, by the amount of stake, again, bad joke, not a meat stake, but in terms of coins, how many coins does the validator hold? And also in proof of stake systems, miners are being called forgers instead. Uh, so essentially the blockchain then keeps the track of a set of validators and anyone who holds the blockchain space uh, main cryptocurrency, in Ethereum's case it would be Ether, can become a validator by sending the special type of transaction that locks up their Ether into a deposit so they cannot spend it anywhere else. So the process of creating and agreeing to new blocks is then done through a consensus algorithm that all current validators can participate in. So then proof of stake miner or validator is limited to, a mining, to limit, uh, mining a percentage of transactions that is reflective to their ownership stake. So for instance, if you hold 1% of the all ethers, first of all, you would be a very rich man or a woman. <laughs> Second of all, you can theoretically then mine 1% of all blocks. The, now let's go back a little bit to talk about proof of work and its drawbacks. Hopefully proof of stake was, was quite, um, uh, quite clear. So first drawback is more, uh, a lot of energy consumption. Also very expensive hardware for the miners. Also there is no loyalty. So people can migrate to mine any other coin without no loyalty to that blockchain. And the only fees that will be earned will come from the transaction fees that will also diminish in the future over time as users will opt to pay lower fees for their transactions. And then with lower, uh, lower number of miners than, um, that will be required mining for coins, the network becomes more, more vulnerable to 51% attacks. If you don't know what that is, uh, a 51% attack is when a miner or a mining pool controls 51% of a computational power of the network and creates fraudulent blocks um, of transactions for himself while, while invalidating the transactions of others in the network. So even blockchains problem is not, the main blockchain's problem is not even the massive energy consumption, but that the network is mostly fueled by the coal-fired coal power plants in China. Because in China it is very cheap, that's why you would see a lot of uh, mining farms there. And this really even, you know, leaves a big carbon footprint even with, you know, con kind of conservative emission factor, still it does leave a lot of uh, an extreme carbon footprint on each uh, Bitcoin transaction, with each Bitcoin transaction, should I say. Bitcoin's proof of work system consumes more energy 
or I think the same amount of energy that Denmark or Bulgaria does in a year. This is, these are major numbers. Even in December, energy spent on mining Bitcoin has changed from 30 terawatts to I think 36 terawatts. So I really want to emphasize that it's not only Bitcoin that consumes this energy, but also other mineable uh, coins. And it is a, a, a quite a big problem. So in comparison, the amount of energy would be enough for three and a half million houses in the US, the 36 terawatts. So in a distributed consensus based on the proof of work, miners do need uh, a lot of energy. And that is being, you know, as mentioned, how, how it's uh, gotten. It. So one Bitcoin transaction requires the same amount of electricity as powering one and a half house for one day. And that would be an American, uh, American statistics. So we talked about the disadvantages for proof of work and how it works. So what are the advantages of proof of stake? So it is more energy saving. Uh, with proof of stake, also the attacker would need to obtain more than 51% of the cryptocurrency to, uh, to carry on that 51% attack. And that really proof of stake avoids that problem by, or potential problem, by making it disadvantages for that miner uh, or forger to uh, have that 51% stake in the, uh, in the network. Because it would be not only difficult and expensive to accumulate 51% of a digital coin, but a miner with 51% stake in a coin would not have its best interest to attack the network in which he holds the majority of a coin. So that is a kind of a uh, positive catch uh, 22. So with proof of work, the miner may potentially own none of the digital currency he is mining. And in proof of stake, the forgers are always those who own the coins instead. So this really brings a lot of loyalty to the blockchain which is being ran through a proof of stake um, system. But of course, proof of stake doesn't come with its own disadvantages. It's not all positives. Proof of stake has its own downsides, like the possibility of long range attacks, uh, initial distribution problem. I'm really sorry my computer's battery died. Um, probably didn't like that I was talking about the drawbacks or the disadvantages of proof of stake, but I'm going to continue with those. It does have also a, problem, uh, a potential problem of a bribe attack or nothing at stake problem, but the Ethereum Foundation is working really closely and very hard to really um, come up with a solution to all of this by implementing this uh, protocol which is based on uh, proof of stake, which is, being, uh, which is being called the Casper protocol. To make Ethereum faster, to make it safer, so this year is going to be very interesting to see the development um, and the fight between the uh, proof of work and the proof of stake uh, and the evolution which is driven most by Ethereum Foundation uh, which is you know, not only spending a lot of time but spending a lot of resources financing scientists to really make its blockchain even safer and even faster. So, this was the fight between POW and the POS. Uh, choose your favorite, state your opinion in the comments below. And if you want to add to it or suggest a new topic, which could be in the blockchain domain or cryptocurrencies, mobile payments, whichever interests you, uh, the Manitha community, uh, please do reach out to us in your favorite uh, platform, email, Telegram, Facebook, we are very responsive there. So thank you very much for your attention. Don't forget on Friday, uh, we are competing in the Cobbin Hood um,
coin competition. More about it, uh, more more about that in the description below and all on our social media. And we will see you in this traditional video series every week in which we're speaking about the things that really matter. So thank you for your attention once more and see you very soon. Bye-bye.